Good morning everyone. Welcome to our morning inspiration. Sunday, April 28, 2024. May God be with you today and may His Spirit guide you and lead you. Our reading today comes to us from Revelation chapter 3, reading from verse 14 to 22. And it says, And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things say the Amen, the faithful and the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou were cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increase with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with salve, that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten, be zealous therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. He that hath an hear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the churches. Amen. We give God thanks this morning for His Word. And we are at the final church, the church of Laodicea. Now, this church is the lukewarm church. Very serious state. Does anybody like to drink lukewarm water or lukewarm juice or eat lukewarm food? No, you either eat it hot or cold, but not lukewarm. True? You prefer it one way or the other. So, this was, so as I said, this was a lukewarm church and it was a church of considerable wealth and talent. So, most of the members were very proud of their accomplishment. That is why they, they, they consider themselves, you know, so rich, yeah. But one thing they lack and it was sincerity. So, this church was from 1844 up until now. So we are the lukewarm church. This is the church in the last day, our time, the time of the investigative judgment. Okay? So this church make a lot of compromise. It compromise the truth and compromise a lot of the principles that we once hold dear. We, we are now compromising them. And so it's almost like we are losing our identity. So this church it easily attracts and welcome new members. But soon as these members realize how indifferent and how lack of warm we are, they become discouraged and they leave. Does that sound like us? Yes, it is. So we have a work to do. We need to change. We need to change. We are in a very serious, serious state. So this is the worst church of all the seven churches of asia this was the worst and so if religion was worth anything it is worth everything that's all i can say and christ expect us that we should be earnest and for those of us who profess the gospel the fact that we are neither at our call he expect us that this indifference this situation that we need to repent so we are not hot neither are we cold as it relates to the gospel but when it relates to secular things or things that have no true value and meaning we seem to be so en enthused and excited and fiery about these things and so we oftentimes find ourselves in compromising situation all because we are focused on the wrong thing 
and so we give a false impression to the world as to what we truly represent and who God is. So we are more pleasure seeking rather than spiritually seeking after God, rather than godly seeking, if that makes sense. So this state in itself is wretched, crazy, crazy. So we are poor, I mean really poor, but yet still we believe that we're rich. So we are unable to see our state. We're unable to see our way and the danger that we are in. Yet we tell ourselves that we see it. Sound like self-denial, right? It's a crazy, crazy thing. So we, we don't have the garment of justification nor sanctification. Oh my God, have mercy. And so we are exposed to sin and shame. We're exposed. This is why we need the garment. And so our rugs, it's defiling us. So in other words, we are without God. We are pulling away from God in whom we should find rest and safety. Oh God have mercy. Help us. This ain't no joke, man. So Christ give a stern warning. He said, look here, man. You need to have true riches because that what you think you have that's not riches those are not wealth those are impersonators you need true riches and so he advised them how they might get these riches so he admonished us that they are just some things that we have to let go some of us we are holding on to some things that are dragging us in the mud we have some bad attitude some behaviors that they are ungodly in themselves, unholy. And we seem to not realize that it's a problem. And these kind of behavior are going to keep us out of the kingdom. We need to part with sin and we need to part with self-confidence that, that God can fill us with hidden treasures. His hidden treasures. These treasures can only come from Christ himself. He went to the cross so that we could have these treasures. So we need to get rid of our own self-righteousness and accept the righteousness of Christ. So we need to surrender ourselves to the word of God and to his spirit. And when we surrender ourselves to the word of God, we are surrendering ourselves to God because the word of God said what? In the beginning was the word and the word was God. And the word what became flesh and dwell among what us so in other words we need to comply with what the word of god say to us and through the complying then we will start to receive those hidden treasures and we will be become transformed to the renewing of our mind and our heart as we surrender to the will of the holy spirit that is what we need to do. We need to examine ourselves by the word of God, not by someone else, not by our own standards. And we need to pray earnestly for the teaching and the guiding of his Holy Spirit so that he can take away the pride and the prejudice and the worldly lust from us. And so here Christ said that he's standing at our door and he's what? He's knocking. So he's not forcing his way into your hearts. He wants you to willingly invite him in that's what love is that is what love does so anybody who is forcing you to do anything they don't love you not my word take it up with god but it's the reality love cannot be coerced or force and he says that whomever let me in whomever surrender to the word that i say whomever make the change that needs to be made, then that person will I allow to sit with me on my throne. So a lot of us, we, we desire, or so we say we desire, to go to heaven, but our life tells us a different story. Because if we understand that these behavior are not welcome into heaven, why are we still holding on to them? Why are we still holding on to them? And so this warning, and the teaching of his word and the influence of his spirit Christ graciously by his spirit is knocking at the door let me in 
Ryan, let me in. Sister, let me in. Brother, let me in. Let me in. That way, when I come in, you can enjoy my presence. You can receive my righteousness. And those, as I said, who let him in, they will receive the great reward of living and reigning with Jesus. But those who refuse, they will be eternally damned. That's the reward. And so as I conclude, God promised to the overcomer, just like he, he overcame and now he's in heaven with his father reigning, he's saying that if we overcome, we also will go to heaven and reign with him. We will we are more than conquerors or we can we can be more than conqueror through him who loved us and gave himself for us. And so friends, if you have two ears, I pray that you will hear. Cause only the obedient, only the transform, only those who accept the righteousness of Christ will be saved and so leodicia ryan sister brother all of us may we listen to the words of god and the voice of the holy spirit because if our desire is truly to see jesus when he comes and to reign with him then we must change our ways we must repent and i say amen i tell you i i i say no more I think I have been clear enough and you can go back and read through the churches and see that this loving God is only desire is to save us and he's beg he's practically begging us and that is why he keep correcting us and he keep reproving us because those who you love you will want to see do the right thing and that's what Christ is doing that is what he's doing so so if we love him then we will do the right thing. God chase us. Let us chase after him too. And I say amen. May God bless you all. And may God keep all of us faithful. May God change us and keep us until his return. In Jesus name. Amen.